How do you start your morning? Richard Kuklinski enjoyed spending his mornings catching up on work at notorious Gambino crime figure Roy DeMeo's Hangout the Gemini Lounge. Oh, and by work, I mean hacking dead bodies to pieces with knives, meat cleavers, and chainsaws while working as a hitman for the mafia. Oh, and, and one more thing. Yeah, that actually didn't happen. Apparently, he was full of shit. But don't take my word for it. Here's what Sammy the Bull, former underboss of the Gambino crime family, had to say. He's a fucking flake, phony piece of shit. I like to dig him up, shoot his fucking skeleton right in the head. Richard Leonard Kuklinski was born on April 11th, 1935 in New Jersey. That's a lovely accent you have. New Jersey? His father, Stanley, was not a good guy. According to Richard, he was a violent alcoholic who regularly beat his children and wife. To make matters worse, his mother, Anna, believed that stern discipline should be accompanied by a strict Catholic upbringing. So she would beat him with a broomstick and shit, just like Mary used to do to baby Jesus. Disliked her a great deal. As a young man, Richard developed a passion for playing pool at local bars. Kids got a sledgehammer, right? Although he's unsure of what he enjoyed more, breaking billiards or breaking skulls with his pool cue. I could be anywhere and if somebody humiliated me, I would think nothing of hitting him with a cue stick. One night, as he was hacking a lung guard outside his favorite pool hall, he witnessed a man undo his pants and take a leak on the side of the building. Being the pillar of the community that he was, Richard had to put a stop to this. So poof, just like that, he invented a new way of killing someone. Maybe this is original. I know what you're thinking. Did he shoot him with a gun from the future? No fair, he's got a gun from the future. Did he punch through his chest and pull out his heart? <laughs> Did he cut his dick off and stick it up his ass? Whoa, 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 whoa hold on. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here, people. He cut a guy's dick off and stuffed it up his ass, all right, but that's like five years from now. No, he actually invented a way of strangling someone to death. I am an innovator. Now, you gotta be pretty fucking tall and sturdy to pull this off. Kuklinski, he was 6'5". I put the rope around his neck, twisted it, <clears throat> and threw him over my shoulder. Pretty impressive stuff. When he wasn't beating people to death with pool cues or dishing out capital punishment for public urination, Richard would spend his free time chasing girls. While working on a New Jersey loading dock, Kuklinski met his future wife, Barbara. He pursued her with vigor. Someday you'll be my wife! And although she was slightly intimidated by his domineering presence at first, she soon accepted his marriage proposal after he jabbed her in the back with a hunting knife and told her that he just couldn't live without her. Domestic violence is very serious. Surprisingly, by all accounts, Richard was a family man. I'd kill everybody in this room for them. Aww, that's sweet. Not that I would or want to, I'm just saying, I would. Besides killing people, he held backyard barbecues, served as an usher at mass, and organized trips to Disney World. Where are the big rides, the big ones? One year, on Christmas Eve, Richard had to run a quick errand. Maybe he was rushing to the mall to get some last minute Christmas shopping in? I'm not a pervert! No, even better, he was picking up a big Christmas bonus from work. Your bonus. My bonus. Now remember, this is the 60s we're talking about here. Bonuses weren't deposited directly into your bank account like they are nowadays. You actually had to go pick them up. Business was business, even on Christmas Eve. But I guess there was a dispute over the size of the bonus or something, because Richard wound up shooting the guy in the face like five or six times. I told him I wasn't happy that he wasn't going to pay me. Only way he never saw Christmas. While allegedly working as a hitman for various crime families throughout New Jersey and New York, Richard killed with guns, knives, ligatures, tire irons, hammers, poison, rats. Yes, you heard that right. No, I while working as an enforcer, some of his clients wanted their contracts to suffer. He claimed that he would tie people up and leave them in caves for the rats. Apparently, he would even film them being slowly eaten alive. But who knows, the guy's full of shit half the time. Richard, I understand that you're an expert in the use of cyanide. Yeah, he sprinkled it on some dude's bologna sandwich. <laughs> I don't know if that makes you an expert. Josh, I understand that you're an expert in cosmology. Yeah, I flipped through a copy of Brief History of Time while I was taking a shit. If you are looking for trouble, you found it. By the 1980s, Richard was the head of his own gang of amateur thieves and killers. And he was pretty good at it, too. For example, 
Once a crooked pharmacist wanted to buy a large quantity of heroin. Sorry, heartburn medication. Yeah, 25 grand worth of heartburn medication. Okay. Anyway, Richard pulled through at the last minute. I put the gun under his chin and I said, there is no merchandise. Sorry, I, I forgot about that. And I shot him. He shot him in the face. But there's a twist. He didn't die. After shooting him once in the jaw, the gun jammed. So he beat him to death with a tire iron, stuffed his corpse in a drum, and left it by the side of a hotel. Easiest 25 grand he ever made. Easy money. Why the fuck would people keep doing business with this guy? Honestly, like everyone he deals with goes missing or turns up with their tongues shoved up their ass. And as if things couldn't get any weirder, Richard allegedly formed a friendship with a contract killer known as Mr. Softy. Why did they call him that? Because apparently he used to cruise around in a Mr. Softy ice cream truck to appear inconspicuous while surveying potential victims. The question is, did Richard actually have dealings with him? Some say yes, some say no. Only Mr. Softy can answer that question. On August 9th, 1984, Mr. Softy was found dead. Oops. Looks like we'll never know. According to Kuklinski, Robert Prongay, AKA Mr. Softy, taught him the art of freezing dead people to obfuscate the time of death. Let it go, let it go. This tactic is what earned Richard the alias, the Iceman. One time he kept a body in a freezer for two entire years before disposing of it in the countryside. Grotesqueness aside, it's actually a pretty good idea. Except that Richard forgot to thaw the body before abandoning it outside on a warm summer's day. Once the medical examiner cut the body open, he noticed ice crystals everywhere and knew something was up. There's something wrong here. This guy uh, could not have died two days ago the way he looks like from the outside. Being an expert with cyanide, he attempted to poison one of his associates to death in a hotel room. Oops. Apparently he got the dosage wrong. Foiled, he returned home to do some research and run a few tests to make sure his next victim wouldn't be so lucky. <laughs> just kidding. He just fucking strangled the guy to death and stuffed his corpse under the bed because fuck studying. He was more of a hands-on learner anyway. Fuck school! Now, in comes the world's smartest medical examiner again. If the cyanide had worked and he had died and he didn't need to be strangled, possibly a, her a drug addict overdose or lots of other things of, an in of a non-homicidal nature would have to be considered. What kind of insight is that? It may have been considered an overdose or suicide? Yeah, because people always kill themselves or overdose under the bed with zero drug paraphernalia lying about all the time. Thank God this guy isn't a homicide detective or Kuklinski probably would have poisoned half of New Jersey by now. In 1985, Richard agreed to kill a wealthy Jewish cocaine dealer at the request of Dominic Provenzano, a criminal with mafia connections. After planning the hit together in detail, Kuklinski was ready to make his move. Oops. Turns out that Dominic Provenzano was actually undercover ATF Special Agent Dominic Polifrone. As it turns out, he'd been recording Richard over the course of their meetings together for the past 18 months. You wait what I want? You fucking crazy? Richard Kuklinski was charged with five counts of murder and six weapons violations, as well as attempted murder, robbery, and attempted robbery. In March 1988, he was found guilty of two murders and sentenced to a minimum of 60 years in prison. Behind bars, Richard could not stop boasting about the murders he allegedly committed. In addition to claiming that he killed over 200 people, he even went so far as to claim he killed notorious Gambino crime figure Roy DeMeo and Teamster boss and still missing person Jimmy Hoffa. Notorious mafia hitman responsible for over 200 murders? Doubtful. Failed chemist and deranged murderer for profit with a hair trigger temper? Most definitely. So what do you think? Should a knife point proposal be considered a red flag? Is murder an acceptable reaction if you catch someone urinating outside of your favorite sports bar? 
let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you've been enjoying the content on this channel, please murder that subscribe button and click that notification bell because we've got new content dropping all the time. And if you just can't get enough, you can also head over and follow us on Instagram and TikTok for even more killer content.